Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to, to be there. Um, so on this track, we have now Kim Polison uh, from the Levin University, who going to talk, us, talk to us about revamping the plant training and documentation setup for Plan 6. So thank you very much, Kim. Um, that's all yours. OK. Hello and good morning or evening, everyone. Um, today I, oop, I'm already messing up my slides apparently. No, I will talk to you about uh, revamping the Plone training and documentation setup for Plone 6. Uh, I actually am a Chinese volunteer. Did they say that in English, in English to give this talk? Um, let me... Uh, give you a short overview of what we'll discuss today. So um, I've been working uh, alongside the documentation and training teams uh, for the past months. As you all know, we've, uh, we're going towards a new Plone 6, new major version. So obviously all the community teams are huddling up and finding a nice excuse to finally do some good work on all the front end public interfaces that we need for Plone 6. So that obviously includes the documentation and the training documentation, because all of that, since we have Volto as the new default front end, and uh, there's a lot of things that will change for that, and it will have a difficult uh, new look and feel. So all the documentation and training needs to accommodate those changes. So we give the Plone 6 a whole new vibe. Um, in order to do that, just to say upfront, this is just an informational uh, talk. There, there's no development going on, but we did feel that uh, someone uh, should present at the conference where we are, where we came from, where we are, and where we're going for both the, the Plone documentation and the Plone training setups. For those of you who follow the trainings, you probably already have seen the end result, but uh, this is a bit past, present, and future of those things. And last but not least, a question to all of you to contribute or give your opinion on what has been done or how you might help in the future. Um, the, the little picture of the god below uh, is a Hermes, the messenger of the gods. I'm not sure if gods are involved, but just to say that I'm just a messenger. Uh, discussions sometimes get heated uh, among developers. Uh, about how and well how you should do your documentation and especially which tech stack to use so this is just to say i'm just a messenger don't shoot the messenger <laughs> okay uh next up um i can't discuss the uh training and documentation in a vacuum as i said this is a whole new major clone version so all the front ends get a revamping uh clone.org is another very important part of this uh, I just mentioned here, the idea will be that Plone Org obviously gets the new, uh, the default UI, I think we name it. There's a lot of naming issues and, and on which, how we should call our front ends. But the default front end for Plone 6 is Volto. Uh, and there is a separate talk about that. So I don't need to cover all that in this one uh, by Rico Peco Oksanen tomorrow. I put the links here in case you want. There's also a news item on the Plone.org site if you want to read more about it. And his talk will be tomorrow, I think, at 5.30 or 6.30. The link is there. You can look it up. And he will explain you more about that part of the changes for Plone 6. Now, so these are just screenshots. This is Plone.org now. And just to mention that this is... Uh, Obviously not what the new Plone Org will look like. We will see that later, but this is just to showcase that there is a, a Volto uh, demo Plone site where you can look just to see how Plone 6 will look. On to the main parts. Uh, Plone documentation. This is uh, unfortunately still being revamped, but we're close. <laughs> uh, it's revamping because it's still an ongoing process. But first, a brief history of time of our Plone documentation. Uh, 
So main technology, uh, which I will cover for most things, also for training. Uh, we are a Python community, and uh, in the past, both training and documentation have always been made with Sphinx and uh, written in restructured text. Uh, restructured text is, yeah, I don't know if it is a markup language, but it is a language in which you can write uh, that's specifically made for documentation. It has a lot of extra features like uh, navigation, glossary, uh, easy ways to add links and headings. So it's actually really built for documentation. And Sphinx is, uh, you can pip install Sphinx, it's a Python package for those of you who don't know, uh, is built to create documentation systems. So it takes restructured text and then uh, transforms all of that, out outputs everything orderly in HTML, latex, plain text and a bunch of other formats. And that has worked for us pretty well. It's sort of a Python standard. Uh, so that's what our documentation was obviously built on. I think uh, read the docs is, is a name that people might know in regards to this. So that was the technology. Um, I'm also um, naming here, uh, a list of the main chapters that we have in our current Plone 5 documentation. Why not? Because, I, well, I do want you to read all of the documentation, of course. Uh, but um, this is a talk about documentation, and it might be nice for everyone to know. Uh, it's, it's a chance for me to give some tips. I put the main chapters here because when you write documentation, you have to write documentation for a bunch of target groups which in exchange will become more important when you need to change or update your documentation like we are doing now uh, to keep that in mind. So we have, for example, working with contents is a part that we should not forget. It's for the target group of your Plone editors. So it's about uh, how do you make Plone pages? How do you make a news overview? How do you publish items? So the target groups of your editors are very important. The others are adapting and extending Plone, which is a bit more for your power users, like doing site settings and things like that. Installing, managing, and updating Plone is then more for your sysadmin groups, the people who actually need to maintain Plone on the servers on your company or universities or whatever. And developing for Plone is, I guess, what, well, that's probably because I am a developer, the part that we read the most when we get stuck and something doesn't work. There is a lot of technical documentation needed if you want to develop for Plone, for Plone add-ons, or for customizations in your own companies. So that we can keep in mind when we need to update stuff. So this is just to remind you, and it's I, I named it current Plone documentation because so far this is still the documentation. We have versions, of course, for Plone, uh, four and five, which are still uh, live. Um, and then let's move to the present. So what happened? Um, we mentioned before that we're moving to Plone 6, which will have full to us the default front end, uh, which means that, well, we sort of decided to go to Markdown and then Docosaurus. Um, Markdown is yet another markup language, um, which is not just yet another because it's basically over the past few years become the standard in almost any sort of documentation site you can find on the web. So it would sort of make sense for us to use something that is widely used in the web community. Uh, Dukusaurus, as you might imagine, is React based, which would fit nicely together with Volto since that's also a React-based product. Uh, Docusaurus is a static site generator for those of you who are wondering, specifically tailored for creating documentation sites, a bit like Sphinx actually, but in a JavaScript framework. So why the shift to Markdown and a React-based static site generator, which is sort of one of the more important things that I wanted to discuss. Um, since Plone is, I put here a headless CMS, it's actually sort of a decoupled CMS, headless CMS is if we would not have a default front end, but we do, we actually have two, well, one default front end, although, and an extra one, so 
or a decoupled CMS and a React-based front-end. So to make it easier for new contributors, but also for any contributors, we moved to Markdown because of what I said before, it's very easy to adjust Markdown. Now, most of our code, we're open source or most of the code is on GitHub. It's very easy to edit um, small things. And most of your contribution, well, not most, but a lot of contributions that people want to give if they do not feel comfortable doing the whole tech stack is just fixing a typo, adding a sentence, adding an image, doing something really small and editing Markdown on GitHub is one of the easiest ways to do that. It's like a little CMS to do the documentation for a big CMS. Um, so that's to make it easier. You have easy preview on GitHub and most IDEs support Markdown formatting. So you have a lot of stuff coming out of the box for that. And since we're expecting the whole documentation will need to be redone at least for the Volto front end and the people who could contribute to that will probably be people who are used to working with Volto or at least uh, JavaScript related text text. And to make it a bit easier on them, it would also be nice if they do not need to completely switch text text. Oh, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> it was a bit doubtful because obviously most of us are still Python people. And if we want to then really contribute to documentation, we need to change text text. So I know there might be an issue there. But for the people who will need to create the new documentation, it will make it easier for them because they do not need to switch those text text anymore. And of course, um, you need to focus on the content. It's like Chrissy said in, in her talk, it's more important that we have people contributing uh, and that they can just focus on the content and not have to worry too much about the difficulty of the tech stack to set up a documentation environment. So that's why we switched to all those things. Then uh, for everyone to know. So as I said, we are not there yet, but we do have several teams working on creating new content. Uh, there are several branches, which is why I specifically added all the, the branches that I know of that are working on, because obviously people are working on various things and different things, but these are the main branches that we will be working on for Plone 6. The main Plone 6 branch is uh, just called 6, so it's branch called 6 on the GitHub repository of Plone documentation. And then obviously we have one for each front end and the back end, which is basically Plone, the CMS that what most of us by Plone developers are used to. Um, just so you know, and <laughs> there might be some discussion on that, uh, but the documentation for now is still set up to use uh, the two front end options. So there will be separate documentation because we have both the classic UI team working on the classic UI and the Volto team working on the Volto um, front end. And they are still pretty much different in ways of editing content, but also in customizing any part, like, I don't know, listings, headings, views, the whole technical way of doing things for that is completely different. So at least for now, they will keep their separate space in the documentation. And then the other thing we should know is that we will not copy over anything from Plone 5. Well, anything, probably, especially for the editors, small snippets of content. But the idea is that the setup is now completely different from Plone 5, being a decoupled CMS with the separate front ends a lot of things will have to be created new. So this is a good chance to go start from scratch. There was an enormous set of documentation, most of it technical and some of it very expanded on lots of things. And let's be honest, some of it not so complete for other pieces of our system. Uh, so it would be good to start from scratch and really focus on the things that are really important for people. Uh, but have no fear, the old documentation will obviously still be there. We know many of you, as us at the university do, we are not ready to move to Plone 6 yet. So the old documentation will be there for anyone still needing to customize or make changes to their current environments. So 
this is so far a, a little demo of what the new uh, documentation looks like. I will see if I can. I have it running here just so I can click around. It's it's really in a demo state, but as you can see, it has a little photo set up. It has already some nice highlighting. I don't really know if we have anything here yet. A little demo page, but this is just to show you what it sort of will look like. As you can see, the, the colors are there, the logo is there, it's the Volto font, so it's gonna look like a basic clone site. That's the idea, to keep a look and feel over all our front-end solutions, and then that will be filled. Uh, it's not that there's no content yet. The, as I showed in the separate branches, present back here, uh, the different teams are working on it, and it's just a matter of moving in the markdown from all those different branches into the main branch once it's in sort of a state ready to go. So that's the future part now. So work will continue. Uh, the idea is to have up-to-date documentation for the different parts, especially the most important ones now for Plone 6. Uh, improve some options for contributing, but hopefully hopefully we can all just work on the markdown uh, based documentation and write some markdown text and everything else will be magically done by the documentation team and docosaurus and the GitHub actions and whatever we will add soon to fix that for you. And one of the things I also would like because it was missing from the current documentation. It didn't always completely update live. So that is one thing that we will look into to have good CICD, meaning that on Git push, every little change that you do, even if it is just fixing a link, that it will get updated automatically to the documentation like it already does or did for the training. Uh, this is just for reference uh, for later. These are the links to the GitHub repo. If you have any issues regards to documentation, please file an issue there. And the documentation is on docs.org and will hopefully very soon contain the new version of the documentation for Blown 6 as well. Uh, for the documentation, I would like to do a special thanks or acknowledgements to documentation team, the Volto team and the Classic UI team, who I know are working very hard to update their documentation. And of course, to everyone who has ever contributed to it, there was a lot of work done and still being done. So thank you for that. All right, clone training revamped because this is, that's the good news, the plone training, as uh, Chrissy also said uh, this morning, uh, has been completely revamped by now. I hope a lot of you attended the trainings and have gotten to see the results and have made good use of it. So this is a bit the story of how that all came to happen. Uh, so again, as in the documentation, we are a Python project, so we were using the default Python tools to generate documentation, again, restructure text and Sphinx. Uh, in the process of that, for the same reasons that I mentioned before, there was also a lot done to change the setup for that. Same here, uh, a lot of photo related trainings have been added especially for this year's conference, because we're, we have a Plone 6 Alpha and we have a lot of people already working with Volto and they already made a lot of Plone, uh, Volto trainings or Volto related trainings. So also here, we moved to Markdown, although it's not really Markdown. Uh, our training documentation has been very good. It's, it's sort of a point of reference when the developer documentation didn't have it. There were a lot of use cases that were only covered in training. So they did have a need for a very technical way of documenting things. Also, because it's in classroom training, they needed uh, special things like uh, solutions that should be hidden and a good navigation and a table of contents, a way to find out which training you're in. So they had a bit more uh, things they needed, requirements than um, the documentation. 
So this is actually at the moment still staying in Sphinx, also because the documentation part is not done and we haven't fully extended the docusaurus setup to fit all the use cases that training might need. Um, but so it's still Sphinx, but it's Sphinx with Markdown. And that for some of you might be a surprise. It was a surprise to me because I was one of the first to do the proof of concept and I thought that, yeah, that, that that's impossible, but it is very possible. And I will pronounce it the way I should pronounce it. It's my ST markdown. So it's sort of uh, my restructured text markdown, I think the abbreviation is. Uh, I usually call it MIST, but I know that the German colleagues might have a problem with that because MIST in German is not a good word to say. So my ST, but I will say MIST by mistake, maybe. <laughs> but what is MIST? And I also put the link here for anyone interested in reading because it is very interesting. It actually adds all the benefits you have in RST, but it's added inside Markdown and it's added in a Markdown like syntax on top of your, like you have headings and, and code backticks. You have special uh, Markdown like code backticks and some parameter to do, I don't know, uh, a show and hide thing or acknowledgements or a side note or a little panel and all of the nice things that RST has, they provided syntax for, but in a markdown format, which means that people who like RST and all its functionality can still write that, but in markdown and people who just want to write markdown can just write markdown as if they don't know RST or don't need any of the special features provided by it. Um, what do I need to say about this? Also, there is um, a specific team that we use. It's called Sphinx Book Team. I think it's actually called Book Team because a lot of the Python open source communities are still using it for their documentation. And the book is a reference to Jupyter Notebooks. So it's actually a theme where if it would be needed, you can integrate complete Jupyter Notebooks inside, which I think is really cool, but irrelevant for the rest of this conversation. <laughs> So uh, with that new tech stack, uh, there are a lot of main features that um, Katja and Philip from training team needed to create their training. Katja and Philip do the mastering clone trainings the past three years. Uh, and they really wanted some features to be in that the previous setup didn't have, which now the Sphinx book team uh, provides, including then the nice markdown, I, the, the option that people who are not used to RST can also use markdown. Main features being uh, a better search. So you have a very nice search where it also shows you which chapter you can find the reference in. There is a way uh, where if you show code snippets, you can copy code. It has a sticky table of contents. So at the beginning of each chapter, I will do a little demo after. Uh, it has the exercises with collapsed solutions. So the people don't really see the solution once they try to do their exercises in training class. Uh, there's apparently still a presentation mode and the glossary is still available. Uh, the training team, uh, they did a lot of changes for everyone prior to the conference. So we restructured all the trainings, put it all in a little different order so it would fit together nicely. And all the trainings that we have were migrated already from RST to MyST. Uh, we did a complete overhaul of improving grammar and syntax, added uh, the GitHub actions for the new setup to be able to on Git push everything just goes live. And uh, also Katja, I think, added a lot of separate sections for the authors and the trainers. So we have a little contributing section where everyone can find the information they need. Uh, if you want the full reference, there is an issue on the training GitHub that I referenced here, that has the whole list of features and us discussing a bunch of things around that. So the new clone training, this is what it looks like. Again, people who did the training have already seen it. I will do a small demo here. Is it this one? Yeah, so this is what it looks like. It has the logo and the colors. And again, it looks all, always pretty clean, but still referencing the same look and feel of it. Uh, you have all the trainings always at your fingertips on the left side. You can remove that if you want to see everything. There's a full screen mode if you are really focused on reading things where you can still move to other trainings. Uh, there's a little uh, 
GitHub thingy here, which means where you can go directly to the repository, open an issue or suggest an edit, and you can download any pages, markdown or PDF. And this is the little table of contents I was telling you about. That's a sticky table of contents. Get out of full screen. And there's a little contributing section around here. So this is if you would want to build, for example, the documentation that's actually documented very nicely in a couple of lines. You can have this set up running locally on your computer if you have Python installed, because uh, it is still Sphinx, of course, but this is actually all you need to do to run it. And there's also an author's guide and a whole chapter on teaching. So if you want to read a bit more on how you should teach a class for software development, there's a lot of nice, interesting information here. Do I need to show anything else? I think that's about... Oh, yeah, and see, you still have the little notes and the table of contents disappears once you go down. I don't know. You can browse through and see little, there's little sidebars, more notes, images, code. I don't know if there's an exercise here. I don't know by heart, but trust me when I tell you there's open close solutions. So that's the little demo of the beautiful revamped training. Let's go back. So for those of you who did not know the previous training, there really were a lot of new features added and a lot of work was done by the training team. Uh, again, here, a lot of... Uh, links where you can find more information, the GitHub repo of the training. Also here, if you have questions or issues, please uh, file them at the issues on GitHub. Um, the contributing section I just showed in the demo gives you more information on how you could contribute to creating training documentation. Uh, and there is on the community uh, some news items about the whole overhaul we did because we obviously wanted to keep the training instructors informed. And as I saw, some of you did uh, create new trainings in the new setup. So apparently that was working well. Um, if you would like to get in touch with a uh, training team, and I think also Docs team now, there is a separate Discord channel, which I put here below, uh, that will lead you to, I think, clone and training documentation is the name or just look for training and documentation on the Discord. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us over there. Also here, I would really, really like to give a special thanks to Katja Suss, Philip Bauer, and Steve Piercy, who did most of the work of making all that happen. They really did a lot of work. Um, so thank you, thank you very much. Um, it will help a lot of people because I know I referenced that training documentation a lot while developing for Plon at our university. Uh, and obviously, of course, to everyone who has contributed to all the trainings that were given this year and all the previous years, that was really a good job. So one of the last ones, um, th this, this is my opinion. So this is not the opinion of documentation or training team. If, if I could daydream, I, I would love it if in the end, the training and the documentation were able to use the same tech stack. So that it would be combined with all the features that we now have in, in the training and DocuSaurus will obviously also have a bunch of interesting features specifically made to write good documentation. Uh, but I would love it if we would just have that in one tech stack so we wouldn't have to switch over depending on what kind of documentation we would like to contribute to. I, I would love to see it integrated and follow a documentation system because if you read a bit on the documentation systems in the world, you, you have this whole theories about how you should separate how to's, the main tutorials to get started, have, have um, the training documentation, which is actually a, a separate thing to do a whole separate thing from scratch and have people do that and have a little aha moment when everything seems to work on their machine as well. Uh, so that would be 
my dream for the for the future that we find a way to have all the nice features in a combined tech stack. So I'm not going to sing help by the Beatles, but help <laughs> is very much appreciated. Uh, we would love it if you get involved, if you have opinions or uh, would like to document something or do a training, uh, feel free to contact us uh, at the Discord channel I mentioned. And these are the main, I think the main links where you can find more information on either the documentation or the training. Uh, so please go over there and visit and see if you can do anything. Uh, even if it is just fixing a link would be nice. Just go over. If you find a link that's not working, go over there, fix it, and it will be there. But maybe for the documentation, we just a little bit so it actually gets live. But these are the main links on how to contribute. Uh, and this is just me. So in case you don't find a Discord channel or anything, at the end of the slides, you can find me as Spiri Verde almost everywhere on the web or by my name. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I will make sure that your questions or comments get back to the correct teams or the right people. All right, that was everything. Wow, thank you very much, Kim. It was super nice to have you there. Um, that, was, that was looking super good. Uh, excellent stuff. So thank you again. Uh, I haven't seen any question, uh, neither on Slack, neither on uh, Slido. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess we can move to the um, discussion area. So you have a, a link beside, uh, if you scroll down in the loud, loud, loud form interface, you, you can see this um, join GT here. Uh, we'll meet you there. Thank you all. See you there. Bye. See you there. <laughs>